Last time, our new rigging was being fabricated. This time, I pondered and wondered how I was going to get this ton of rigging down to the boat in Mexico. What are you doing in your underwear, Robbie? Not originally the plan, but I recruited Robbie to come up here and assist with the task. What a sight. The ship is going somewhere. We considered commandeering our friend's vessel, Joie de Vivre, and transporting the goods down to our destination that way. It would have been a pretty epic thing to do the whole trip again, that we had already done on sailing vessel Rosa, and even partway on our original boat, My Way. Thanks, Ivan, for the boat. <laughs> you get to enjoy your, your sailing boat instead of you. As nicely as Joie de Vivre sails, and the good condition she's in, we didn't have the heart to attempt the heist. Oh, I'm chasing down Joaquin. <laughs> Trying to get in the way of the little kids' classes. We considered our friend Matt's boat, who invited us out for a sail as well. I did notice these container ships loading and unloading giant shipments in the waterway, but I had already researched sending the gear down by wooden pallet, and the cost was too high for us. About fifteen or sixteen hundred dollars to be exact. So the fate of getting these very important parts down to our boat was shrouded in foggy uncertainty. A really cheeky grey dolphin appeared. It eluded my camera, like the answer to how we could afford to get all this equipment to our boat eluded my grasp. Yeah, that's a full-on dolphin. I didn't know those live here. He's so sneaky, man. What a little cheeky dolphin. After much deliberation, we prepared to drive down to the border with our friend Jean, who offered to bring us at least that part of the way. Well, I'm gonna take this one because it's already open. Well, how much that way? How many are we for, right? That's the right size of pot for water. Preparation included making a last good old fashioned American favorite meal of spaghetti and meatballs on his boat. And that's the simplest and easiest thing to make a good pasta is lots of water. The, ideally, you do three fourths sea water, one fourth uh, fresh. Or half and half. I'll try it. I, I do half and half of pasta usually, but potatoes you can. You know, give them an extra, so if you make a mashed potato, they don't really absorb that much of the salt. Mac cooking at its best. <laughs> pre-made meatballs, pre-made sauce. One of the last sauces I made in Mexico was uh, like a ragu, but not exactly a ragu, because there was no chuck, no beans in it. It was just uh, beef, two types, lean and a little more fatty, and uh, ribs that we braised with onion, garlic. You, you blanch the tomatoes in hot water and you peel them and you remove the seeds so you get no acidity half bottle of red wine and uh, then we put everything in the pressure cooker well first we cooked it for like an hour and then I was like nah then we put everything in the pressure cooker for like another hour so that the meat fell off the bones and all that was served with the egg tagliatelles and uh, provolone cheese it came out it's a bomb you saw Carmela how it had a lot of stuff hanging on that one this one has a lot less hanging Remember Carmela had stuff everywhere hanging? It drove me nuts, but I still love my hanging pots nonetheless. Oh, 
What's the right? What's the right hardness of pasta? When you bite into it, you should see no white. What's no, that's perfect. It's perfect. Cheesy, cheesy for Justine, so she's having a veggie one. I think the harder the sauce is, the more it penetrates the pasta. So you're not a, a, a sauce dumped on top of the pasta type guy? I have no particular preference on that. I've never seen Robbie make pasta and then just put the sauce on top of the pasta. What? He always mixes it in. The ride to Mexicali was very smooth, although it was pretty smooshed and tight in Jean's little tiny Saturn with all our rigging. He dropped us off at the bus station where we thought we would board an overnight bus directly to Mexico City. I can't believe we fit everything this tiny cave. We, we fit everything in there. However, the bus that we paid tickets for never showed up, and seven hours later, we boarded a bus that the driver said, as we stuffed all our bags into it, oh, by the way, we'd be going only as far as Guadalajara. Well, luckily, we knew some folks in Guadalajara who ship things often on pallets. So we packed up our 190 kilos onto a pallet there. After traveling halfway down to Mexico with this shit on our back, we decided, you know what? We got a friend who's, who's got good contacts at a shipping company and we're like, let's just ship the stuff. Instead yeah. of taking two more buses with it, we're gonna ship it the rest of the way. It would simply not work to take the extra bus to Mexico City, then to move all our stuff from a bus to a taxi, to our friend's house, to a taxi, to a bus again. Shipping made sense and cost only about a dollar a kilo. From then on, we only each had to carry a relatively small little backpack. We bust over to Mexico City, where we would find the only possible connecting buses going to the Cancun area. In Mexico City, we hopped on a bus to Playa del Carmen. The best part about traveling is seeing the unexpected. Outside of Mexico City, we climbed up the highway into some higher altitudes and witnessed the pine trees coming into view. Majestic mountains popped out of nowhere seemingly. And as I stared as we traveled closer, I realized that at least one of the peaks was an active volcano. It made one big burp and the cloud dissipated as we traveled away and out of view. You know the volcano is active right now? Yeah, it's active. Mountains turned from peaks into valleys, and then flattened into misty jungle. We were all so happy to be reunited again. You know what this means? Sit right on my foot. Count A, A, <laughs> A. He's excited to go to the boat. He's excited to go to the boat. 
Was the trip back from San Francisco to our boat here in Mexico a nightmare? Yes. yes, I would say it was definitely a nightmare, yes. And we arrived dead. It took us five days to get back home. It wasn't really a question of, ooh, how hard is this going to be? Uh, you know, how tired am I going to be? It was, it, at some points, there were kind of questions of, yeah. are we going to make it back with all our stuff? Is our stuff going to make it? I thought we could eventually get to where we were going, but was our stuff going to make it with us? When we started driving with Gene in his car, uh, yeah. to the border, it was okay. It that was really, easy part. <laughs> it was really a very pleasant trip. We had talked about getting a car at the border, but we didn't have the budget to buy the vehicle and then also get the gas. It would have been a matter of we can either buy the fuel or we can buy the car, but not both. The most comfortable way to do it probably would have been to Fly buy business a, class. Buy, fly business class. Class back. Take your stuff. Sure. <laughs> Pay all the overweight, uh, overload uh, 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 prices and get 190 kilos onto the plane and with us, with a nice little push cart and that would have been the, the most comfortable way and we would have been back in about six or five or six hours of fly time and... But that's not the way we travel. That's not our style. <laughs> our next choice in line was to grab a bus when we got yeah. to Mexicali and that's what we did. And it seemed to be easy. Uh, we arrived at Jean to where all the buses are and they're like, oh yes, here you go, we pay, we got a bus ticket. They said, your bus is going to be arriving in an hour and a half. I'm like, oh, perfect. We, we get to Mexico City, we have one bus change. Yeah, we would have to deal mm -hmm. then with moving the 190 like, kilos you know, one, from one bus to, to another, another bus. Supposedly in the same bus station, which is... Yeah, po out. possibly mm -hmm. even in the, in the same bus, bus station. station. But that's not, of course, what happens. Uh, what happened? Uh, first, the bus arrived what six and a half hours late yeah so our bus wasn't coming mm -hmm. they kept on saying well just wait for your bus it's coming it's just out of town just yeah. wait for it it's coming so seven hours later a bus arrives and so this is your bus but not really <laughs> yeah so get on the bus and we're loading our 190 kilos onto the bus and they said oh by the way this bus That's isn't really your bus. bus this bus is going to Guadalajara huh. and not Mexico City which if you look on the map that is not the same place so okay i guess we're taking that bus and that bus was kind of like a chicken bus in all intents for all intents and purposes yeah bathroom it, clogged before we even left the bus station so that was fantastic pee and paper and all kinds of unmentionables that was okay okay well i guess i just won't drink very much and i won't need to use the bathroom but then the bus we found ourselves waking up in the middle of the night for several reasons. First stop was uh, boom. The bus stopped on it and, and, and fell down on its side. And I thought, well, this is it. We've lost a wheel. The bus is about to flip over. But it ends up that they were just changing, I guess, one of the wheels. And, and they put us down super rough uh, on the jack when they finished, so. I have actually been on a bus across Canada before where they've changed the wheel of the bus because the yeah. tire blew halfway there. but. Um, they got everybody off the bus and told everybody what was going on in this case. It was just kind of like, oh, surprise, we're doing a, a tire change in the middle of the desert. Then the second stop was uh, one of these infamous, um, uh, I call it the, 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 wa the luggage walk. So what they make you do is they, they do one of these checkpoints, they stop the bus. Everybody make, gets off, all yeah. your bags, then there's never a single trolley, they have to take your bags. And it's usually about 500 to 800 meter walk to a place where there's a broken x-ray machine where they pretend to scan your stuff. What we learned this time around was that there's not only the option of being forced out of the bus to uh, walk with all your hundreds of kilos of luggage from point A to point B then get back on the bus. There's also the option apparently to like... Have let's to get call, let's the call bus. it I will not bother you fee type. Uh, oh, there's also a fee I guess that you can pay that <laughs> stops you from, from everybody on the bus having to get out and walk their luggage across. At 3 in the morning. It's one more thing that we learned about. Every time we take the bus in Mexico we learn something new. It's, a, 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 it's happened twice out of two times yeah. that we've taken the bus so um, I guess be prepared for that kind of stuff. <laughs>
when I had first made calculations about what getting our rigging was going to cost us overall to get it and then to get it to the boat here in Mexico. I had talked to a couple of rigging shops in Florida because those are closer than the one in San Francisco. We ended up going with the, the rigging shop that we know and who are our friends in San Francisco. Uh, but uh, the rigging shops in Florida were giving us estimates for about the same job to be about 4,000 US dollars for the rigging job that we got, or just the material costs. Yeah. Uh, if we just send them the calculations and then they make up the rigging to those specs and then we we get it shipped here um, I guess it would end up being about <clears throat> $5,000 I guess after shipping More, uh, I think you pay more than thousand dollars for shipping So just full disclosure, uh, we didn't pay that price because this, the shop gave us a special deal but for the rigging that we're putting up, you could probably expect to pay about five thousand bucks for more, the yeah. just the material. If you're if you're hiring for any labor, uh, if you have somebody go up your rig and do measurements, if you don't do the measurements yourself or um, even just the swedging and everything like that, you can expe expect to pay more. But uh, that's kind of like the minimal cost for our forty footer. Now that we are back. We have piles of heavy metal <laughs> projects to do, as well as a lot of the wiring that uh, was sent to us from our patrons and, and yeah. from some viewers. We've got a lot of electrical stuff that still needs to go in, that didn't go in while I was gone. I'm gonna let this boat go past. Boats, dogs, power tools. There's a fly sitting on the camera. Exactly. It's chosen that place to die, right there.